Okay, because I can't leave well enough alone, I'm going to show you how to beat the very last level of Flood Fill, which is a game by Gimme Five Games, and it's on Newgrounds uh, by the username One Fifth. If you look, I'm going to settings and the rules. You use the mouse to fill the shapes with the colors, and you don't let the same colors touch. So. You see this white line down the middle. Blue and blue is bad, but blue and orange is good. If you use as few colors as possible, you get a gold star. I've gold starred the whole game. You can use the 1, 2, 3, 4 or ASDF keys to change colors. I just use the mouse because it's easier. Here you see that I've game has been won and I've gotten all gold. Uh, next to each level, the white star means that you've beaten the level, and a gold star means you've used as few colors as possible. Which, in the first couple levels, and you can see how uh, simple these shapes are, it's just two colors. And then when you get to here, you have to start using three colors. And I think it's three colors for most, at least most of the levels till the end of the game. I tried solving them with as uh, few colors as possible. My first time through the game, I just went through and used my simple strategy of just alternating blocks with one or the other color like in this one just real quick I'd always make this top left uh, shape or block or section blue and then I would skip over that so this one this one this one this one and this one are all touching so then I would do like this one and this one no yeah this one and then this one and then this one and then I'd come in with the green and do every other shape as green, and then I'd come in with the orange. But that's not orange. And because that wouldn't win, then I'd just pop in with a purple and go like that, and I'd win. And then later on, uh, if that wasn't the correct solution, like it is with the later levels, I would do that in the later levels, I'd use purple, and the purple, of course, would give you the level beaten star, but not the fewest colors star. And so I'd have to go back in and systematically solve it to beat it with three colors. And I remember having to do it for like, I know for sure, 18, 19, and 20, because those are the levels I beat just before I uh, decided to record this real quick. And what I'm going to show you how to do here is how to beat level 20 with as few colors as possible. Just to show you my initial uh, strategy, this top left section goes blue. Also, if I call these squares, uh, I used to... I say in my head, you know, color the square, even though it's not a square at all. This is a penta uh, pentagon. It's a five-sided figure. It's just because the early levels were square, so I was saying square. Uh, so then you just skip around and make sure that none of the blue touches, but that you get as many blue-colored sections as possible. So now if you look, every gray section is touching blue on one of its edges. This is allowed from here to here because this vertice is not counted as touching. Same thing over here. Then you come in with green and you do the same thing with green. This one, this one, this one. And then you come in with orange and you go this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And oop, there we go. Now we have a problem because if you make that orange, you do not win the level. If you make it purple, you would, do, you would win the level because uh, then you wouldn't have this touch right here. And that was where I decided to start. I found this one shape where I can't put any color because all the other colors are touching it. And uh, there's no clear button here, so you have to actually go back and either move the level back and forth, or and that can be a real pain if you're relying on, your on certain sections of color being in place still. Otherwise, you just back and forth it. So this is decided to be the key square. And I just said square, even though I don't mean square, because it's obviously a triangle. In fact, it might even be isosceles. And I color it blue, because blue is just the first color. I then go around that and alternate the other colors. So I'm just going to make that green. And I'll make that green. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't make that green. If you do this, going around this way, you end up with these two square, uh, these two sections that are both touching blue, 
and they're both touching green and so you can't do that so you end up having to do it this way why can you do it this way because these two sections are not touching each other because they only meet at a vertice therefore these are not uh, adjacent to each other another way to put that is let's just say that I had done green this way so this is the only way I can do it now there's still three shapes touching the blue and if I fill those in with orange oop, I went the wrong way I meant to do it the other way I'm an idiot okay so that's green then we would go orange 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 and we end up with a problem so we cut back and take a look at it again and again it doesn't matter that first color doesn't matter because I can make any of these my first shape I suppose a way to do it simpler more simply that would be the correct way to say that just color one uh, section next to it the other color so you've chosen your key section and you then pick any one of the adjacent sections to color your second color and we're just going to pick this one why just because alright so now you choose your third color and this is the systematic approach I suppose when I was doing it before skipping around I'm doing this exact same mechanism just faster so if you look at this section it's touching blue and it's touching green so it has to be orange it can't be blue and it can't be green so it has to be your third color which is orange no other sections are touching blue and green at the same time and remember this one doesn't count because it's on a vertice so we then look at just go back to our second color and we find that blue and orange are touching this section so it must be green okay and then again you could you don't have to go around like this but I'm just showing you how I arrived at my first uh, set of colors this section is now touching green and blue so that one's orange and now this section is touching orange and blue so it's green and you just continue out via that same logical pattern um, I start with this this particular setup because I like I said I'm doing the same thing but I'm doing it faster and just getting myself a larger work area I like to have the blue section completely surrounded so that I don't have to worry about making a blue choice now any of the other sections on the screen I can color blue and know that I won't be touching this blue one in the middle because I've taken everything that's adjacent to the blue uh, triangle in the middle whereas if I had for example stopped right here and decided that oh this one's touching green and orange so it must be blue and now you know following along that way I don't like it you can do it that way I just don't like it as much and actually I want to color these the way that I'm used to them which would be this okay so now we just follow that same pattern and it's important that you only color in the spaces that ha are touching the other two colors this space right here is not touching the blue so I could just go right there and put blue but I don't know if that's a right move because I don't have a second color touching this section to tell me that it has to be blue it might be that this has to be green in order for everything else to work we don't know that yet what we do know is that this section is touching orange and it's touching green so it does have to be blue and that this section is touching orange and it's touching green so it has to be blue those are the only two sections that have to be blue right now you want to only go by what has to be now looking around it uh, you just look and find another section that's touching two colors this one here it's touching blue it's touching green so it has to be orange and following that this section is touching orange and blue so it has to be green this one is touching green and blue so it has to be orange now this one's touching orange and blue so it's green this one is touching green and orange so it has to be blue this one is now touching green and blue so it's orange green and orange means blue green and blue means orange and now this one it's not touching the green but it's only touching the blue and the orange so it's green now you've got uh, orange and green is blue 
orange and blue is green, see how it had to be green and not blue? And now you've got green and blue is orange. And there you go. Uh, I know it can be a little... I talked fast, I suppose, maybe. But that's how you solve all of these levels. The tricky part is simply finding the correct key square. Um, I'm not saying that you, there's only one section in there that you have to start at in order to arrive at the correct answer. But it helps if you just do that quick alternation like I did at the front until you arrive at a, a section that suddenly doesn't work because now you can start solving that section that you know doesn't work and then go out from there and end up with a correct uh, solution. If you do that pattern and you end up with an incorrect solution then you can start over and do it again. I've only had that happen to me once and I'm not even sure if I followed all my rules correctly in doing it. I might have missed something. But there you go. That's how you can beat this game.